What's up guys, it's Drac, and this is a new blaster coming at you, and that was too much energy for it, but I have had way too much caffeine, I've been staying up really late working on End War, and this is the only way we can get hyped for a YouTube video anymore. So, this is a brand new blaster uh, in advance of the Foam Pro Tour Top 8, this is going to be available at the Foam Pro Tour Top 8, this is going to be competitive equipment used in the Foam Pro Tours Top 8, aka the Dart Zone Pro Tour. We're gonna be using this, and this is, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spoil it. Uh, so this is the tournament edition, but as I'm unboxing it, if I was able to compete in the DZPT, this is the blaster I would be using on my team. All right, so this is the DZP 2.1, and I think that we can take away from that that this is how they're doing their nomenclature from here on out. There's like, you know, almost a role where the numerical value is the type of blaster. And they seem to iterate after that point with whatever the next step is. So we've had the, you know, the DCP 1.0, which is the limited edition orange kind of pump action takedown uh, rifle. Then we had the 1.1, which was the target exclusive one. And now we've got the 1.2 sitting over there, which we'll get to later. But this is the 2.1, which effectively is going to, I don't know if it obsoletes the 2.0, but it's definitely a very exciting offering when compared to it. So this is the DZP 2.1, which is their tournament edition. I actually really like seeing the tournament logo on here. Other than the light shine, I mean, it's pretty, it's a very shiny box. This is, I guess, the special edition that you'll be able to pre-order at End War. But uh, on the back here, we've got what all it comes with, the pistol itself, a muzzle brake, two additional magazines for three total, a magazine holder on your belt, a holster, as well as some pretty premium goggles and an amount of darts. Then you've got your requisite uh, warnings and advertisements, a QR code that goes somewhere. I don't know where this QR code goes. On the top, you've got all of the Dart Zone primetime stuff. And then over here, not dissimilar from how the 1.0 shipped when it was a, a special edition, we've got kind of a, a secret agent case box thing to sort of denote this as the special edition version of the 2.1 but this guy and i don't i don't know the pricing on these but this one is supposedly under a hundred dollars so this is a competitive tournament grade pistol for somewhere between you know 80 and a hundred dollars i don't know where that's going to wind up uh, on the inside here, you've got a full kind of spread. It looks like this is a single tiered box. There's not like two layers of it where stuff is hidden underneath. So I'm gonna start pulling stuff out, but first we have instructions. Then we have an advertisement with more QR code, which is probably what the QR code on the back is. Just talking about the many different darts in the ecosystem. That's kind of cool. You've got the holster, which seems very on par with the holsters that, uh, that's like, bungeed in here that seems on par with the holsters that dart zone has been including with a lot of stuff including you know the uh the deuce as well as uh the mark ii which was a very compelling holster so looks like it's fitted to the pistol looks like it won't handle the muzzle brake being on top of it looks like this is going to articulate through for whichever angle you'd like this to be seated at and then it's got one thigh strap and one belt strap all of that is you know adjustable and modular in that way. I'm sure it's a fine holster. I like uh, my holsters to be a little bit different in terms of how they're situated, but I might just take this off and take advantage of the fact that the paneling here has a lot of points of articulation and strapping areas, and I might try and molly convert it onto a subload panel or something to that effect. The, uh, the belt clip here is just a piece of ejection molded plastic that holds two magazines. The magazines are by far uh, my favorite part of this product because they just, they're the thing that takes it uh, to a completely different level. So this is the two magazines in here. You're gonna be able to kind of click them into place. I just put them in the wrong way. Since the magazines have an angle, they do snap in. Once they're in, their retention is really good, but that's our bonus mags. It looks like we have enough darts to load the blaster completely. I think this is 18 darts, I imagine. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So yeah, 18 darts for the ability to, to load it completely, all three magazines. The goggles are actually, these are the nicest goggles I've seen included with any blaster product in a while. It looks like there's a protective film over the actual, uh, oh yeah. Is this satisfying for you guys? Do you guys like this? I like this. So that means that your, your kind of display here is gonna be super clean. And then you have just a bunch of rubber fitment in the back here 
taking these from like, you know, glasses, which is what we've been seeing in a lot of products. And these look like they'd go over regular prescription glasses if that's an issue that you might have like me. But this is good elastic. This is a hard frame. Then there's a soft sort of, this is spongy rubber here that lets you almost like swimming goggles. And they do look a little, a little goobery, if that makes sense. Like it definitely looks like rec specs, but that's kind of what they're designed to be. So I think that, you know, compared to glasses, these are a pretty serious offering. I just destroyed my hair here. You guys will have to forgive me. I'm trying to get a haircut before inwear. What do you guys think? Should we let the mane flow? Or should we get it kind of high and tight since we've got some media appearances at End Warp? After all, we are planning on live streaming the entirety of this top eight for you guys. And I, uh, I just want to look my best. So that's the entire contents of the box. That's the review, guys. Uh, thank you so much for... I'm just kidding. Let's talk about this. This thing is pretty slick. This is not a scar. I guess is the most important addendum for the muzzle. However, it does add a lot of orange onto a silhouette that's otherwise a little spicy. This one being very pistol pistol-esque. However, not being a scar is not a deal breaker because this is the standard mating system for Dart Zone's barrels, which means that theoretically you could take a Foam Pro Shop scar and you could uh, attach it to the pistol if you were so inclined. For some reason, Dart Zone keeps doing this where they'll add, and it looks like in this case it's super removable. You could take these two screws out and pop it off, but the holster has a way to add the muzzle to it so that if you wanted you could carry the entire system like this, and you could pull it out and then attach this afterwards. And the Mark II and the Deuce Pro have very similar kind of add-ons to their holster systems. It's not for me personally. I would be removing this and, like I said, completely rebounding this system. But it's just incredible that it comes with all of this. It's very thoughtful. And just because I would change it doesn't mean that it's less intentional and less, uh, less well-designed. So I think that, you know, having a holster included at all is a very nice feature. We haven't seen that. Uh, since, you know, certain Rebel products. And for Dart Zone, it just seems to be the standard for them. If they sell a pistol, it comes with a holster, which is really, really thoughtful, very cool. I love that they also consider, like, how are they going to carry the extra magazines? I'm hopeful that there's a way to buy these additional magazines kind of aftermarket because the magazines themselves, if you take a look here, in addition to just... That's a, that's a very good... It's almost too strong. Can you guys tell that it's a... It's a Luckily, they're pretty durable. So that is a, uh, a spring-assisted kind of magazine there. I definitely think that they're great. They're using this novel kind of multi-lip system that Dart Zone's been doing since the Mark II. The Mark II's internal magazine had these. If you check it out, there's one and then two. And the reason for that is that when you prime this guy and then you were to watch me kind of rechamber, you'll be able to see there that the way, the way this works is the plunger and the, uh, the pusher are all one system. So it's pushing uh, via the plunger. The plunger is an oval, obviously. It's actually not an oval. It's almost like a stretched out diamond pattern with rounded edges. It's, it's just pretty funky how, uh, how Dart Zone's like, you know what? Everybody uses circles as their plungers. Uh, we want more ergonomic shells, and therefore we're just gonna make the plungers whatever shape we need them to be. But in putting these, uh, these multi-stage lips on the mag, uh, magazines themselves, you get to chamber a more powerful plunger tube into a direct feed into the barrel, which is uh, pretty smart in and of itself. But the overall kind of action of this sort of mag release, the way that it clicks down, clicks up, clicks down, is, uh, is very smooth. It's certainly real steel inspired. I like this mag release. I like how it's super flush to the body and very tight. Some things that we're not talking about here is that this back strap on the Prime is uh, the DZP kind of rubberized thing, which is actually very nice. It's not a super heavy Prime, but it's definitely not light. And it's great that you get that extra purchase. It's also multi-material. The priming slide itself is hard plastic. Uh, it's just this back strapping here that's got the rubberized coating on it, which is pretty nice. Blaster definitely has a lot of power. You've got the same sort of rubberized coating here on the grip. I'm not sure. It looks like it even splits in the back. It'll be very interesting to see how this guy is uh, is moddable at some point. Uh, I can't modify this one because I need it for the tournament right now, but we will eventually get you a mod guide and some accessories. Just, I don't know. I can't tell you how much. Like I said, if I was going to compete in the tournament and I was on a team of five, I feel like a lot of people are going to discount 
the pistols because of perhaps power, because of onboard ammo capacity concerns, but I, I love this thing. Quick reloads, very tight around cover. Uh, this is the one that you want to give to your guy who's like truly mastered the power slide, I feel. And so I dig it. I think that it's really slick. Uh, I think that it's a very dynamic blaster, but the most important thing about it is how does it perform? Like how does it actually throw darts downrange? And to do that, we're gonna take it outside and we're gonna show you what it's got under the hood. Let's go. All right guys, so I didn't bother throwing on the whole holster and I'm not gonna fool with the muzzle attachment. They're just not my speed. This is an honest review after all. I just, I wanna use it the way that I would use it, which is to say pretty, pretty run and gun style. I actually, uh, just a fun trivia fact, back when I was playing uh, speedball, one of my favorite things to do during practice sessions was to use a Kingman eraser, which was a micro uh, paintball pistol that had pretty similar kind of kind of magazine sort of setup where the the grip was very thick due to the uh, the ammo in the air being all in one. But you guys don't want to be bored about that. Let's see what the FPS is on the uh, the 1.2 and if we've truly obsoleted the two or if we've just turned that into like kind of a sneaky IWB style pistol thing. 163 is pretty hot. 156, 171, 169, 167, 164 and that is the full magazine. So I want to say these things hold six rounds each, maybe it's seven. I think that you could squeeze the seventh one in there. While I click this one into place, I am just going to take a second to, uh, to get some data on the, uh, I guess I shouldn't have clicked it into place. Uh, I want to load this one with some target darts real quick. I find the, uh, the max darts and the pro darts, i.e. the target Walmart versions that are so incredibly affordable and available to be slightly lower performance than the bamboos. Uh, whether that's how they mate with the barrel or how they chamber, I have no idea. Is this primed right now? I guess it holds seven. Huh. But now we're on, uh, we're on max starts. Let's go ahead and put a few of those over. 134, 138, 137, 137, 139, and empty. So I missed the target there with one just because I'm moving uh, pretty quick. However, I do just want to point out that uh, that's still not end war legal. This is too much power uh, to be your anti-zombie pistol. But I find that uh, revolvers and HVZ are kind of a romance that I like. I mean, after all, I came up playing with Spectres and Mavericks. So uh, that said, very spinnable. I almost wish I had the holster so that I could lock it in like that. But we're going to take a few shots at the target. We're going to obviously dial in for the fact that it's shooting about 160. Still, you know, a highly competitive blaster, especially on a field with cover. Uh, but I hope that I can dial in and hit my very, uh, very worn out target here at about 50 feet. So let's see, uh, I could line up the sights or I could just try and feel it. Those are all pretty close. The reloads are just that quick though. That's pretty cool. Hit something. All right, there we go. That one even kind of rung in there. So as far as the ranges and the on-target performance goes, I think that this is, is firmly in the sidearm category. However, uh, it's got a lot of pop to it. Certainly very cool. I think that you get major advantages from the ability to uh, drop your magazine literally and figuratively like that. I actually really dig the uh, the belt setup. I guess we didn't get a great look at it here, but uh, I think that this is pretty sharp, a very clean way to carry these. Uh, I don't think that they'd be falling out anytime soon. I think I did just put them in backwards because I'm still getting used to it. Yeah, you get a, uh, a little bit of feedback when you put them in the right way, but overall, a very handsome pistol platform, certainly a sincere upgrade on the 2.0 and something that I'm really, really excited to get some field time with uh, personally. If we do an exhibition match, I will almost certainly be using this and you guys will uh, get to see me bust out my paintball pants. But you'll be able to see more of this pistol at the Dart Zone Pro Tour, which is the finals for my event, the Foam Pro Tour. That's happening at End War, which is the number one event in our hobby. You gotta come out, you gotta check us out in Rochester this July. Full links and information in the description box down below. If this is your hobby, if this is something that you're really passionate about, End War is something for everybody. We got a convention full of Nerf liberties, a term I don't necessarily like. We've got a convention full of uh, tradespeople. There are multiple companies coming. 
there are sponsors and vendors and fun and food trucks and all sorts of stuff. Then we've got a full HVZ Invitational happening at RIT's campus, which if you've never played there, it's just an exceptionally unique game board. We're very excited to be partnering with the, uh, the Rochester, I guess, HVZ club there. They've got a great set of moderators. We're really excited to bring that game to you. And then of course, Sunday, it's all about the Foam Pro Tour. I cannot wait to show you just the highest level of sport, the best athletes. We've spent a lot of time doing qualifiers. And if you still wanna qualify for the Foam Pro Tour, we're giving away slots to two teams of five the Thursday before end war, we call that the last chance qualifier, and that's also in Rochester. So definitely come out, check out the live stream later on this week, and make sure that you, uh, you are aware and tuned in, whether you're consuming the content and just checking out the live streams from the event, or if you're planning on being there in person, there's a lot of foam flinging goodness to be had. And this is just gonna be, you know, one thing featured at it. I'm sure everybody's got a few more tricks up their sleeve, but I think that it's not an understatement and hyperbole gets thrown around a lot on the internet. But for me personally, uh, out of all the Nerf pistols, I've had the experience of using the clean and easy mag and grip high performance kind of nature of this thing while still looking uh, not explicitly real steel and having a cartoony silhouette with this heavy back end. This is probably my favorite, if not, you know, the best Nerf pistol I've had the pleasure of rocking in a very, very long time. It's kind of impossible to capture that, you know, 2010, Maverick in the back pocket of Trip Pants vibe, but this feels pretty close. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, much love. Blast on, Drac out.